I think in the two plus years that I've had this YouTube channel, I have never done an empties video and shown you all the things I have gone through in a particular season when it comes to skincare and hair care. And so I saved my empties for you this time. So we're going to go through my summer skincare empties and there's a lot of good stuff in here. I'm Dr. Sam Ellis. I'm a board certified medical and cosmetic dermatologist in Northern California. And I'm really here to help you understand your skin and your hair and your nails and find products that work for you. So if that sounds good, give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I would consider myself a skincare and hair care, not just like a junkie, but an aficionado, if you will. I love a lot of different skincare and hair care and I have access to a lot of it. I buy a lot of it. I get sent a lot of it as gifts from brands. And so when I actually open something, use it, and then completely go through it to the point where it is empty. To me, that is a sign that it is an amazing product because life is too short to use bad skincare and hair care. I'm going to try to keep this video somewhat organized by skincare or hair care category, but honestly, this is such a massive bucket of empties that there is a chance that we get to the bottom and there's a random product in there. So bear with me. I think we'll start with cleansers because I'm seeing a few different cleansers sitting here at the top. So let's get into those first. Okay, so first up, I have the Bioderma Micellar Water. I think one of the very first YouTube videos I put on this channel, I had my Holy Grail skincare and the Bioderma Micellar Water was part of that. And it continues to be a staple for me. I use this as a first cleanse to kind of remove makeup or sunscreen. I often will put it on a little cotton pad and then just swipe it over my face or eyes. If I have like a heavy eye makeup look on, it's really nice to go in with something like this first to just sort of get a lot of the gunk off. And then I'll go in with a more gentle cleanser to sort of finish things off. I also really like my cellar water if you're on the lazier side when it comes to cleansing your face because you can leave this by your nightstand, for example, and just have some cotton pads there. And instead of makeup wipes, I feel like this is a nice substitute that's a little less irritating and a lot more gentle on your skin. Now, the thing with my cellar water is you actually can leave it on your skin. You don't have to rinse it off. I still like to go in with a double cleanse on most nights and rinse it off afterward. But just know that if you're using this as your only cleanse or you're using it in the car or on the go, you don't have to rinse it off. All right, another cleanser I have in here is the Clean It Zero by Vanilla Co. Is it Vanilla? Vanilla Co. This is a Korean cleansing balm. It smells not great, I actually think. It kind of smells like grape cough syrup. Not super intense or anything. Like, obviously, it didn't prevent me from using this, but just so you know, it does have a little bit of fragrance, but this is such an excellent, affordable cleansing balm. So I would say, even though I use my cellar water a lot to cleanse my face, I often prefer a balm, especially if I'm going in the shower. What I'll do is I'll kind of keep this outside the shower, put it on, work it into my skin while my shower heats up, and then I'll get in the shower and actually rinse my face off. So on days that I'm wearing heavy makeup or I did a big workout or I had water resistant sunscreen on, I do really like going in with a cleansing balm. And this is super effective. It doesn't sting my eyes. It does leave like the tiniest film if I leave my contact lenses in when I wash my face. But I find that true of pretty much any cleansing oil or cleansing balm. But if you need like a great, affordable, super effective cleansing balm, this is it. Again, if you're like anti grape fragrance, let me see, is that really what it smells like? Yeah. Okay. If you try this and you think it doesn't smell like grape, it definitely has some fragrance. So let me know what you're picking up in it. But regardless, again, it didn't like linger on my skin. It wasn't enough to deter me from using it because it was so effective. So Highly, highly recommend. And then I do just have one more cleanser in here, I think, uh, and that is the Tatcha Indigo Cleansing Balm. Holy cow, you guys, this is like launch of the year from Tatcha. This is the most effective cleansing balm that I have ever used. And let's see if I left any in here. No, she got pretty much scraped completely out. I mean, it's not a ton that comes in here, but you really don't need a lot. So even though this probably has half as much product as the other one, I feel like I used, like it took me the same amount of time to go through these products. And actually, as soon as I opened this, I don't think I touched another first cleansing step until this was completely gone. I've already repurchased another one because it is so, so good. If you have sensitive skin, I think this is an amazing cleansing balm. It's incredibly effective. So you don't have to push really hard or really rub or scrub at your eyelid skin, which is really nice. It also doesn't have any fragrance. It's calming. Like all of the things you would hope for in a cleansing balm, the Tatcha one has. It is a little pricier. It's definitely a little bit more of an investment, but if you don't like washing your face and you feel like that's such a chore, this makes it so effortless. It is incredible. I feel like if I could only use one first cleansing step for the rest of my life based on all the products I've ever tried, it'd be this one. And ooh, okay, I lied. I do have one more cleanser. 
I, I mean, cleansing is something I do every single day, which is probably why I go through those products the most. And that is the Naturium, the Perfector Salicylic Acid body wash. So this goes in my shower. This is such a beautiful, gentle cleanser that has a little bit of salicylic acid in it. So salicylic acid is a beta hydroxy acid. It works by kind of delving into the pores and cleaning out dead skin cells and kind of that clog that's made up of sebum or oil, as well as the dirt and debris that collects in our pores over the course of the day. And I would say this is so gentle that you could use it on your face as well, but it's such a nice body cleanser. I wouldn't say it'd be my first choice if you have a ton of body acne in that case. I'd probably reach for something like a benzoyl peroxide cleanser, but salicylic acid just has this very nice, gentle exfoliating quality. So if you just have like a little bit of body bumps and you still want a really hydrating cleanser that has a little bit of exfoliation, this is excellent. You could also use it as like a shave gel. So it's kind of a plushier cleanser. So you could shave with it, armpits, legs, etc. Yeah, I, I ran through this and I think I went through it so quickly because my husband uses it as well, but it's a really, really nice, affordable body gel. Let's get into hair care next because that's what's at the top of the pile. And honestly, it's taking up a lot of room in this little bin. So let's go through it. First up, I have actually two products by Virtue. So I've worked with Virtue in the past. This video is not sponsored by them. I have bought a ton of their hair care products on my own. But first up is their Virtue Flourish uh, shampoo for thinning hair. So this comes as one of their hair regrowth sets. It comes with like a conditioner and their density booster. It also can come with their minoxidil. So their version of Rogaine. I really have just like run through this shampoo. It's a really nice, luscious lather. And I feel like it really cleanses my scalp. And I'm kind of prone to using a lot of different hair products, whether that's dry shampoos or hairspray or hair oils. And those can accumulate on the scalp and on the hair over time. And I feel like this does such a good job of just sort of like cleansing without being like a true clarifying shampoo. And then I also finished the Virtue Conditioner. This is also from their Flourish line. It's the mask for thinning hair and you can kind of see the texture. It's quite rich, but it's also a little bit whipped. And the whole point of this is that it's good for people with thinning hair. So the issue with people who have thin hair, and that is definitely me postpartum, is that a lot of masks can feel a little too heavy, or even if they make the hair feel amazing for a day, the next day your hair like looks greasy and weighed down or it's hard to style. And I find with this, when I use it, my hair is still super shiny, but it doesn't like shorten my in-between wash days. It doesn't make me get greasier faster. And to me, that is super important because I don't love washing my hair. I also really like this mask because you only need to leave it on for a few minutes. So I find with a lot of hair masks, like they work better if you leave them on for 10 minutes or half an hour or an hour. And maybe before I had my son, I had time to do that. But like, I do not have time to sit around with a hair mask in my hair generally. So I really appreciate that this sort of like does all its magic in just a few minutes. And when I'm using a conditioning mask, I'm using that instead of a traditional conditioner. So I wash my hair with shampoo. Then I go in with my conditioning mask, let it sit a few minutes and then rinse it out. So I often reach for conditioning masks more than I reach for traditional conditioner just because I only wash my hair a couple times a week anyway. And so if I have a few minutes, I might as well just like go in with the mask. Another product I finished this summer is the K18 hair mask. This is not a conditioner. This is really like a hair repair product. And I think it is absolutely phenomenal. If you've watched my old hair videos, I used to be like a big Olaplex girl. Sorry, Olaplex. I've kind of moved on. K18 is really kind of my go-to. If you haven't heard of K18 before, where have you been? No, just kidding. It is a peptide treatment that is meant to penetrate into the hair shaft to help repair damaged bonds. So within your hair shafts, you have thousands, millions of keratin proteins. And those keratin proteins can get damaged and they can become unstructured in a way where it makes the hair look dry and frizzy and prone to breakage. And so the whole point of the K18 peptide is really to get in there and repair those keratin chains as well as repair disulfide bonds, which is another type of bond in the hair that gives it integrity. So if someone has dry hair, damaged hair from heat styling or color treating or sun exposure, then using something like K18 in your regimen, I think could be amazing. When you first start using it, you do it as like a series of consecutive treatments. So when I first brought this into my routine, which was like basically a year ago now, like regularly before I would like dabble in it, but I never really used it how it was supposed to be used. So when I brought it into my routine regularly, I used it for four consecutive washes. I washed my hair with shampoo and then you towel dry your hair. You don't put conditioner in and then you just put this in and you leave it in for four minutes and then you can go about styling your hair however you want. So you don't rinse it out. And after four minutes, it's sort of fully activated. So you do that for four consecutive washes. And then now as maintenance, I just use it once a month. But 
oh man, it has made my hair feel just like so much stronger, less prone to breakage. I obviously bleach my hair. I obviously heat style it. So I'm not the nicest to my hair, but I really feel like having K18 in my regimen is truly worth it. Also because I'm postpartum, I have a lot of new baby hair growth and new hair can be really fragile and really prone to breakage because I'm still heat styling, I'm still bleaching my hair and those baby hairs just like don't have as much integrity. So using something like K18, which you use from your ends all the way up to your roots, really helps support those hairs so they don't want to break or fall out the way that they might if I wasn't using something so supportive. And then my last hair care empty for the summer is actually a supplement. So it is the Nutrafol postpartum. <gasps> I go through one of these a month, so it makes sense that we have a few at the end of the season. These are my only hair care supplement that I take. I was kind of hesitant to start taking them initially because I was like, I don't know, do I like really need to add something else to my regimen? But I truly feel like this has made a difference in my hair growth. A lot of times my patients will ask me like, do you recommend hair vitamins? And I don't say that I recommend them for every single person, but I have a lot of people who are interested in nutraceuticals and how they might help with hair growth. And there are not a lot of brands I would recommend, but Nutrafol is one I truly stand by. They have a lot of really good clinical testing. It's very safe. And I do feel like this has contributed to my hair like density, which to me is really important. And so if someone wants to try something like Nutrafol, I usually recommend doing it for at least six months. I know that's kind of a big commitment because again, these are like spendier vitamins, but they probably hate that I call it vitamins, but in my mind, it's like a, a special vitamin, hair vitamin, if you will. I do think you need at least six months to try it because hair growth is so slow. You have to think about what's happening. You take the supplement, it has to start changing sort of like the hair growth pattern, then the hair actually has to grow out and that takes a while. So if someone's interested in trying something like Nutrafol or another hair growth supplement, I usually say give it at least six months. If at the end of six months you're seeing no evidence of improvement, then ditch it. But for me, I really did. I also feel like it really helped my nails. I didn't expect that. There is biotin in here and there's some like subtle data that biotin can help with nails. So maybe that's what it's for, but either way, I'm like really happy with this. When I'm fully done breastfeeding, I will switch to their non postpartum version, which has a couple of other ingredients in it. But yeah, people always ask me if I do anything for my hair besides like the topical things and Nutrafol. Okay, we are making progress. Like we, we have a lot less in here now, so we'll get to kind of like the back half of the products. If you're enjoying this kind of empties video, definitely make sure you're subscribed to the channel and you like the video. So next up, I have the Tower 28 Daily Rescue Facial Spray. This is like their famous SOS spray. I'm not sure if I've ever talked about it on this YouTube channel, but it's a huge staple in my regimen, but it's often with me on the go. And this is a hypochlorous acid spray. Hypochlorous acid is actually a compound that is naturally made by our leukocytes or our white blood cells to help defend against things like bacteria and viruses and fungus, but you can use it in a topical form externally to kind of achieve the same thing. So in my mind, this spray is like a true antimicrobial, anti-inflammatory, multitasker. I see a lot of people apply it on their face in the morning, like when I watch TikTok and things like that. It sounded so millennial when I watch the TikTok. Anyway, I see people put this on their face, which I think is a great thing if you have acne or you even struggle with rosacea. I was talking about hypochlorous acid the other day with my girlfriend, who's an ophthalmologist at Vanderbilt. And she was saying, oh yeah, we recommend hypochlorous acid all the time to our patients who have blepharitis or inflammation on their eyelids because it helps kill off like the bacteria that resides there. And it can help things like dry eye or chronically irritated eye. So I feel like hypochlorous acid is just like such a versatile product. I actually keep this hypochlorous acid spray in my son's diaper bag. It kind of comes with us wherever we go because he has really delicate skin and I actually use it to like wash his hands and disinfect instead of putting like a ton of hand sanitizer or Purell on. I don't think they market it as a hand sanitizer, but we use hypochlorous acid sprays all the time in dermatology clinic to prep our patients for surgery, to prep them for invasive procedures when we're gonna poke them with like a Botox needle or a filler syringe or something like that. And so it really does help remove bacteria, fungus, and viruses from the skin. And so I love having it in my purse to just like spritz on and it is super, super gentle. So that's the other thing. Hypochlorous acid at these kinds of concentrations is meant for skin. It's safe around the eyes. If a little bit got in my son's mouth, I wouldn't be worried about it. So it just is like a very versatile antimicrobial type of product. It's also amazing for like armpits and feet, areas that stink due to accumulation of bacteria and those bacterial byproducts. So I feel like sometimes people see a hypochlorous acid spray and they're like, I'm confused. I don't know what to do with it. You can kind of do 
everything with it. Okay, we'll move on. Just wanted to spend a little extra time on hypochlorous acid because I feel like people always have questions about it. But if you haven't tried it, totally recommend. Next up are sunscreens. So two of the same. My Beauty of Chosan sunscreens went through two of these this summer. I go through sunscreen a lot, but these are the ones where I've like run through the entire tube. This was in my Holy Grail skincare last year. I still love it. So many of you have now tried it and say like, Dr. Ellis, this was the first sunscreen that made me love sunscreen. So definitely recommend. A lot of you have been buying it on Amazon. And unless you are buying it directly from the Beauty of Chosan storefront, which at this moment when I'm making this video, I saw that it's not available there. You have to be so careful buying products like this on Amazon. There are so many bad, fake, I don't wanna call them dupes, just like imposters on there that are not the actual sunscreen. So I usually recommend buying this from reputable sites like Stylevana or Yes Style because you know you're actually getting legitimate product. But if you haven't tried this sunscreen yet, like what are you waiting for? I could probably squeeze like a little bit out of here to show you the texture. It is incredible. It's just like a lightweight moisturizer. And I think that's what I love about it so much. For many people, this is the first sunscreen they've ever tried that just feels like lotion on the skin. It doesn't feel heavy or sticky like traditional sunscreen and also doesn't have that sunscreen smell, which some people, myself included, aren't super in love with. So if you have sensitive skin, if you're acne prone, if you have rosacea, if you just like don't usually like sunscreen, I highly, highly recommend the Beauty of Chosan. Lots of Korean sunscreens are excellent, but I feel like the Beauty of Chosan is sort of like a gateway sunscreen and it shows you how amazing sunscreen could actually be. So yeah, two empties of this this summer. All right, next up in my skincare empties is the Skin Utility Ointment from my skincare brand, Prequel. So this is a petrolatum based ointment. So if you think of like Aquaphor, CeraVe Healing Ointment, good old Vaseline, this sits in that same category. But I have to say, since this sort of final formula was put together, I have not really reached for the other ones because to me, this serves the same purpose as those other ointments. It's occlusive. It prevents transepidermal water loss. So it helps maintain the water balance of the skin. But this is more than that. It also truly moisturizes the skin. It calms the skin. It's not quite as greasy. It has like a lighter finish on the skin. Let's see if I can show you the texture a little bit. If there's any left in here. Oh yeah. Okay. A little bit left. So you can see it's still like it's, tr it's a true ointment, but it just has like a lighter finish on the skin. Almost, I heard someone describe it as like a dry oil finish, which I think is kind of amazing because it still has all of those nourishing capabilities, but just is like a little less greasy. And I feel like everyone can benefit from a petrolatum based ointment in their routine, but for a lot of people, it's like a textural issue. So I really tried to address that with this specific product. Now, this launched in June of this year, and it did not take me just two months to go through this tube. I've obviously had access to this before the launch. And this is the one that sat on my nightstand table. And it probably took me four months of consistent use to fully go through this. But I also give a little to my husband. I put a little bit on my son. I like to use it definitely on the lips. So I will literally just like put it on my lips like that many times a day. I do it at work. Uh, of course, I do it before bed, like a lip mask. And then I like to put a little bit like on my cuticles. And then I'll put a little dollop like on my elbows and sometimes my feet before bed, depending on if I'm going to be like wearing sandals the next day, we cannot be having crusty heels. So many different ways to use this. Also since launching, it's been really fun to see how you guys are using it. So when I am sort of thinking of products that I would like for prequel to have, I always have in my mind, like how I would use this or how I would recommend a patient use it. But then once it goes out to the consumers, you really get to see what they do with it in their hands. So I've seen people use it as like a highlighter base when they do makeup. I've seen people use it on their eyelashes. I've seen people mix it into their other lotions to kind of enhance the texture, make it a bit more rich, a bit more occlusive. So it's been really fun to see how everyone else is using this, but I think everyone needs an ointment of some kind in their skincare routine. This is also great on like cuts and scrapes and little wounds. So plenty of uses for this. I'm not surprised that I ran through it, but you know, the perks of being a brand founder, I have many more tubes. All right, what else we got in here? Ooh, okay. So I don't know if I could share this. This is also from my brand prequel. It has not launched yet, but I have run through this sample and it's not going to be in this packaging, but I guess all I can say right now is it's incredible. I'm so excited when this launches. If you have any guesses about what this product is, let me know in the comments and we'll see in a little while if you were right. Another one of my empties from the summer is my Lumiere Firm Neocutis Illuminating and Tightening Eye Cream. Pretty sad about this because this is not a cheap eye cream, but it is my most repurchased eye cream 
by far. And I feel very confident recommending this because over the years, as I've continued to use it and recommend it, I get tons of messages being like, Dr. Ellis, this was a great find. Like, I don't feel bad spending the money on this. One, it takes forever to go through this. You just need the tiniest amount, just tiny little bit on the orbital rim above and below. And I truly feel like it makes the area around my eyes brighter. I feel like it makes the skin look a little more firm. I feel like eyes need all the help they can get. And I used to not be so all about the eye cream. And still, I feel like some eye creams are truly just like repackaged moisturizers, but this has a hold on me. I will continue to repurchase this. I will continue to try other eye creams too. And it's not to say other eye creams are not good, but this one is fabulous and yeah, it's empty. Okay, just a couple more products. So next, this is embarrassing to show because the label's like completely destroyed, but this is the Maybelline Lash Sensational Mascara. My most used mascara by far. It's probably what I have on in like 85% of my YouTube videos. It's what I'm wearing today. I personally cannot put on false eyelashes. I just don't have that magic touch. So if I'm gonna be filming or on camera or going to an event, or I just want my eyelashes to pop as much as possible, and in my lack of skills in applying false eyelashes, this is as close as I can get. And I think part of it is the formula, but I also think part of it is the brush. So let's see if I can show you this brush here, this little fatty. Can you, is that in focus? No clue. But you can see it kind of has this little curve and so you can like really like wiggle it and get up. And I feel like it gives me great volume and like a little bit of length. I don't need super lengthening mascara. My eyelashes are already pretty long, but they're a little bit more sparse. So something that sort of like thickens them, gives that sort of full fan effect without looking super clumpy, which I hate that look. Uh, this is amazing. It also doesn't transfer, which is also really important. So over the course of the day, I don't find that I see like fallout or flaking below. So it's a very reliable mascara. And then my final empty is the Tatcha Indigo Overnight Repair Serum and Cream. I have spoken so much about this on this channel, on my Instagram, on TikTok, because I just think this is such an amazing, amazing moisturizer. I'm sure I left the tiniest bit in there so I can show you like that texture divine if you have sensitive skin, like truly a Goldilocks moisturizer, like not so heavy and rich and thick that it feels suffocating on the skin, not so light that it sort of loses its presence. It's like right down the middle. It's amazing for sensitive skin. It's fragrance free. I'm gonna rub that in. Oh, so amazing. But if you like take this and then you pair it with the cleansing balm, if you have sensitive skin, oh, like such a beautiful match. I love it so much. Tatcha like really nails it with textures for me and I'm such like a texture person. Of course it has to have good ingredients, but it really does have to feel good on the skin and do what it's supposed to. And I just feel like that moisturizer totally nails it. And yeah, that is a wrap on my summer empties. I'm so curious if you like this type of video. So definitely let me know in the comments. I also wanna know if you've tried any of my summer empties and what you thought about them. So let me know in the comments as well. Thank you so much for being here and watching your support means so much. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and I will totally see you next time.